Oh, hello all my friends from Quest. What was that? That was like, ah, I don't even know what that was. That was just some random sound. How are you? Friday afternoon, Friday midday, Friday at lunchtime, I think is when you're watching this or just before lunch. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I am a little under the weather. Not exactly sure why, what's going on, but uh, I never get sick. Uh, but here we are, nonetheless, trooper. What are we doing? Well, we're going to talk about something in just a moment. We're going to talk about some things in just a moment. But before we do that, we got a little problem. We got a little problem. And the problem came to my attention just a few days ago. And the problem has to do with us serving you. Yes, we caused a problem. And the problem is, that's what's come to our attention, or my attention, that some of you did not get the information through the month of April. What is going on? So, you got a, at this last management meeting, you got some information, and then you were supposed to get more information, and some of you, we're not exactly sure how many of you, but we think most of you, didn't get that information. And that was brought to my attention by Tish. And so, Tish, thank you so much. So we went back and started looking and, at all of our systems and our processes. And sure enough, it, uh, there was a glitch there. And you didn't get the information that you needed to get and that I intended you to get for the month of April. Information on coaching performance and information on business development. And you were going to pick, right? So now we're in a bind because the first thing I have to say is I'm sorry. I mean, that's completely unacceptable, right? That you didn't get information that I told you were going to get. So completely unacceptable and I, I apologize and my team apologizes. Um, we identified why it happened, how it happened, and we've corrected that. And um, that, that won't be an issue again, but I, I am sorry uh, and I do apologize. And, um, you know, I hope you'll forgive me. And uh, and then we can move forward to get you the information you need. The, 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 the other dilemma, of course, is this, that all of that information from April, I want you to get that information, <laughs> right? I want you to have that information. So it presents a little bit of dilemma for May. So here's how I'd like to handle it. I'd like to take that information from April and provide it to you in May because I think it's important. And, and we'll walk that information out for you starting on Monday. And you can pick between the business development information and the coaching information. So that then, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about communication. And we will do that. And, uh, and then when we're together um, at the end of June face to face, we can talk more about communication. But I, we've got some good information here about communication. I'd like to go through it with you. I apologize for the inconvenience that this causes and ultimately it's, it's my responsibility as the leader of the organization and so I'm sorry that you didn't get what you were supposed to get in April. We'll make that up to you. We'll get it to you in May. We'll go over this information on communication now. You can talk about it over lunch there and, uh, and then we'll revisit it when we're face to face in June. Communication communication. Did you know that the average worker spends 50% of his or her time communicating in some way, shape, or form? Now, what's interesting is your whole business is communication. That's what you do. You are experts in communication. That's why governmental entities and, and, and cities and municipalities and states and, and uh, the Department of Transportation and the people up in Connecticut and the people in Texas, whatever, that you're great at communication. You're great at uh, 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 crisis communication. You're great at relationship communication. You're great at branding. You're great at communication. You, Quest, is great at communication. There's only one challenge. Are we any good at interpersonal communication, right, Jeff? That's the challenge. Because 85% of, uh, uh, of business success, they say, is dependent on effective communication and interpersonal skills. So 50% of the average worker spends their time communicating, talking, emailing, presenting, whatever. 
communicating. And 85% of business success is dependent on effective communication. Look at this one. 45% of time spent communicating is listening. Writing represents 9% of communication time, except for Twitter. Now it's Twitter, right? And 75% of overall communication is nonverbal. Crazy little facts, right? Now, you know I love history. The first guy to really break down a process or a system for effective communication, you know who it was? Aristotle. Aristotle was the first guy that said, you know what, let me break this communication thing down into parts so it can be better understood. He said that there were three pieces to effective communication. Now, now listen, why is this important? Because 50% of your time is spent communicating. Because 85% of your business success depends on your ability and capacity to effectively communicate interpersonally within your organization. Steve and Diane and Jill to Charlene, the four of them to the, their, their, their direct reports, and then those district managers and so on to their people. And then all of you to the client. It is critical how much time and energy and effort gets wasted on ineffective communication. It's crazy. So. For, for you and for me, it's all about my ability to do what Aristotle said. Aristotle said there was three components. He said there was a sender, there was a message, and there was a receiver. He said there was a sender, a message, and a receiver. He said that that was the key. Now, I look at that and I say to myself, I say, you know what, Aristotle, pretty sharp guy. He's a pretty bright guy. There's only one problem. I think Aristotle's evaluation was lacking. <laughs> I know, I know. I think I'm smarter than Aristotle. Well, you know, what can you do? <laughs> I think there's a couple of things that were lacking. The, the key to effective communication, the keys to effective communication are beyond just the individual who's sending and the individual receiving and the message. I think it's more sophisticated than that. The person on the end of the communication process holds the key to whether or not communication has taken place. Now listen to what I just said. The person at the other end of this thing is the person who determines whether communication occurred or not. So I, I said to myself, there's more than Aristotle laid out. You have it there in your handout. There's the sender. I agree with that. There's the message. I agree with that. But in today's day and age, there's the conduit. The conduit might be verbal. The conduit might be a text. The conduit might be a flyer. The conduit might be a banner ad. The conduit might be an email. The conduit might be a lot of different things. But we have to take into consideration the conduit to deliver the message. When I'm upset with somebody who hasn't performed properly, is the best conduit of communication utilize email? Or is the best conduit of communication face-to-face? -face? Or is the best conduit a Twitter post? I don't know. But shouldn't I ask myself before I start firing off emails, Twitter, or go storming in somebody's office? So, sender, the message, the conduit, the receiver has to be taken into consideration, understanding and effect. See, I think that is a complete loop of communication. Who's sending the message? Their makeup, their biases, their whatever. The message itself, what do I want to get across? The conduit, what's the best conduit to get that across? The receiver, i got to take them into consideration. You and I talked about it before. What's their communication style? Fact-based, emotion-based, belief-based, values-based. Did they understand it? How do I know they understood what I wanted them to do? Or did they understand the message I was trying to get across? And how am I checking for that? And then finally, did the communication have the intended effect? That's the complete loop of communication in my mind. Now, 
say, that's really, really complicated. All I want to do is get somebody to do something. Well, it's like anything else. 80% of my unconscious behavior. Once I have a system in place, as I start to walk through that system, it, it takes hold and it will become a part of my toolkit and a part of that 80%. So quickly, I want to break down a couple of these and then we'll revisit these when we're face to face. Let's start with listening. Why is it so hard to listen? It's hard to listen because hearing and listening are not the same. I hear sound, but when I, translating, when I translate it to meaning, that's listening. You and I hear a lot of sounds. We hear a lot of words. We hear a lot of messages. But it's not till it's translated into meaning that it's truly listening. Listening is a selective activity which involves the reception and the interpretation of sound. It involves translation of sound into meaning. The sounds that come out of your mouth, the sounds that you give off with your body language, if you know what I mean, those are, those are sounds you can't hear, but they're still sounds. The roll of the eyes, the flip of the hair, whatever it might be. These all send messages. And they're going to send, they're going to be perceived in a certain way. So we have to be very aware of the messages that we're sending. Check this out. People speak at 100 to 175 words per minute. But they can listen intelligently at 600 to 800 words per minute. So what happens? Mind drift. So we, that's why we have to focus. Remember we talked about listening like people were going to die at midnight. So here you are in a business that's about communication. And when it comes to interpersonal communication, are we experts? Do we understand the system? Sender, message, conduit, receiver, understanding, effect. And that the beginning of that is listening. So you're the sender. Let's start there as we'll move through this quickly and then we'll unpack it at a later date. You're the sender. I've talked to you about this before. What's your communication style? Is it fact-based, emotion-based? Just in a coaching session the other day, I talked with one of you about this, that they were going to go talk to somebody else. And first, I asked them to ask themselves what their communication style was and then look at the communication style of the person they were going to go communicate with and then walk through the kind of language, examples, and sequence they would use to get the message across. They were going to talk to a fact-based communicator. And that person I was talking with in the coaching session said, you know what, I would normally have done this if I'm going to go deal with a client. And I said, well, you know what? There's no more important client than your internal client because you can't serve the external client effectively if you're not effectively communicating with the internal client. So what's your communication style? And then I want you to think about your nonverbal messaging that you're sending. Eye contact, facial expressions, the gestures that you use, the way you set yourself up in an office, the way you position your body, the proximity that you are. Remember the thing from Seinfeld, the close talker? The close talker that talked to you like this, right? You remember that episode? And then your tonality. All of this, all of these nuances, all of these nuances affect the messaging, affect the understanding, and either ensure that what you intended to occur occurs or act as an impediment to occurring. If, if you're one of those guys, there's only you and me and Steve, and if you're one of those guys that twirls his eyebrows, I used to have a guy that twirled his eyebrows. That's what he did. He twirled it. When he'd be talking to you, he'd go like this with his eyebrows. And you'd never understood a thing he was saying because you were like, look at him. He's twirling his eyebrows. So do you have nervous habits that detract from your message? Do you have little idiosyncrasies that take people away from focusing on what you're saying? Do you make certain gestures and do certain things that might distract someone from hearing exactly what you're trying to get across? So you're the sender. So you have to be mindful. It's not the responsibility of the receiver. It's the responsibility of the sender. 
Okay, how about the message? It's always outcome-based. The message always is developed in reverse. Now, I, don't, I shouldn't have to talk to you about messaging. I shouldn't have to tell you or teach you about messaging. People hire you to develop a message and deliver a message. But I would say this. Messages are always reverse engineered. I want the employee to walk out with blank. All right, now let me build my message to have that intended consequence or that intended outcome. I'm going to sit down and talk to Steve or I'm going to sit down and talk to Diane or I'm going to sit down and talk to Jill or Charlene. Let me think through the intended outcome I want and reverse engineer that. What kind of a communicator am I? What kind of communicator are, them? are they? Or if you are one of those four people I just mentioned, I'm going to go meet with whoever, Tish, Susan, Mary, whoever it might be. And again, I'm going to reverse engineer. Here's what I want the outcome to be. Now let me build a message that takes me there. Some simple questions you can ask yourself when developing that interpersonal message. How can I say it? When should I say it? Where should I say it? What could be the potential reaction when I say it? And then visualizing the conversation. Those questions, how can I say it? When can I say it? Where can I say it? Just thinking that through a little bit will set you on a path to success. If you really want to sound, send a strong message of your authority, you might say it in your office behind the biggest desk that you can find. That's going to send the message of authority. If you want to send a message of interpersonal communication, I'm on your side, you come from the other side of your desk and sit down face to face, no barrier between you and them. Now what's funny is it doesn't take a lot of time to think that through. So you reverse engineer it, and then how, where, when, what could the reaction be, and then you practice it a few times. And then there's one caveat. What's the conduit I want to deliver the message through? So is the best way to send this message via virtual, email, Twitter, whatever? Is the best way to send this message in some kind of written letter, formal letter? Is the best way to send this message a spoken word face to face or on the phone? Or is the best way to send this message unspoken? Yeah, unspoken like this. Or that, maybe that wasn't very good. Or whatever. Sometimes you're better off not saying anything at all and that sends the message louder than any words that you can say. But notice this is proactive in our approach. We're proactive to mitigate the risk of miscommunication, mitigate the risk of poor communication, mitigate the risk of ineffective communication. Again, I don't have to teach you guys about communication. I'm just reviewing some of these things with you to think about it in terms of your internal communication and its effectiveness, 85%. 85%. Of business effectiveness is because that business is great at communicating. Okay, that's the message. Now let's quickly look at the receiver. Now we've already talked about it. Are they fact-based, emotion-based, belief-based, values-based? You're already thinking about that. But I also want you to think about some barriers that might prevent the message from getting across. Culture, background, biases. Are there some cultural challenges? Are there some, some background challenges? In other words, is there some interpersonal history here that might create a bias before we sit down and chat? I think it's important, especially in contentious conversations, to think that through. I don't want to have a whole bunch of noise around me, distractions. How about me? Am I a barrier? Am I a barrier? Have I created a distrust or a, 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 a lack of confidence that would be a barrier in our conversation? How about perception? Do they perceive me to be heavy-handed? Do they perceive me to be weak? How do they perceive me? And do I need to identify that right away? Well, you know, I, I know you might perceive that blah, 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 blah. Or I could see how you may perceive blah, blah, blah. Just put it out on the table. Then, of course, as we talked about the messaging, stress, stress is have you put the receiver in a stressed environment or a stressed situation? Are they stressed coming in? 
when you go and ask them to take on one more task, are they going to freak out because they're already stressed? But I have to get the message across to you. Oh, I, I didn't disagree with that, but I'm asking you to think it through of where they might be at so that you can, you can reverse engineer that approach to get you to the outcome that you want. So taking some of these things into consideration are critical. So I have understood my own communication style. I've thought about the message that I want to send. I've picked the conduit that's the best based on where that receiver is at, their style, their frame of mind, whatever. I deliver the message because I visualized it. I thought about where I should do it, when I should do it, how I should do it. I've delivered the message. Somehow I got a check for understanding. Now we've talked about the chat before, so I won't go into that. I'm doing 80% of the listening, 20% of the talking. But somehow I got to make sure that what I intended to get across got across. We've heard of the parroting technique, right? Where I repeat back. So what I hear you saying is. So what I, what I, what I, what I think you to mean is. But the number one way to check for understanding is just to ask those open-ended questions. But in doing that, a couple of tips. Don't finish other people's sentences for them. I have a bad habit of that. Don't answer their question with a question. Well, let me ask you something. Right? That's what people do. Now let me ask you something. Oh, no, I, I don't want you to ask me something. I want you to answer the question I asked you. Be aware of biases. You all have them, and we need to control them. Don't daydream or become preoccupied because this person's rambling on. There is nothing more powerful, listen, nothing more powerful than another human being feeling as though you understand them. Nothing more powerful than a human being feeling understood. So you want to build that trusting relationship. Really focus. Don't become preoccupied. Don't plan your responses while the person is talking. If you need to think through your response, let them finish and then think through your response. But don't plan your response as they're talking. People can see that. Keep the conversation on what the speaker says, not what you think or what you perceive. Work off of what they say. And, and it's difficult to work off of what you think they intended. If you're not sure what they intended, ask. What I think I hear you saying is, and did you intend to mean blank? I'm just checking to make sure I understand. Oftentimes, the lack of alignment within an organization comes from poor inter interpersonal communication. And oftentimes that comes from what I just talked about. We never check for understanding. We're, ne we're never clear with each other. Isn't it funny? In the most intense industries, they regularly check for understanding. Air traffic controllers between the pilot, they're checking for understanding. They repeat back what was said because there can be no ambiguity. There can be no miscommunication. People's lives are at stake. Police officers, firemen, and fire, uh, firefighters, and military. There's that exchange of communication to ensure that understanding has been reached. What happens if you check for understanding and they didn't get it? Well, then you need to re-message. You need to adjust your communication style until they do get it. I'm not moving on until somebody gets it, right? And then finally, the effect. Was the desired outcome reached? Was there any residual effect, good or bad? And do you now better understand this person? So that's it. That's the steps. Now, here's the thing. That's all very good conceptually. It's all very good conceptually. But in the coming weeks and when we're face to face, we'll unpack this in some, in some role playing and we'll unpack this in some, in some cool little video to help you See what I mean. Each one of these things, see what I mean. We'll show you a scenario, and then we'll show you how that scenario could be different. Show you a scenario, show you a scenario how that could be a little bit different. Again, I apologize that you weren't able to get the information from April. We'll get that to you in May. You choose which, which is going to be coaching or business development. When we're together, we'll talk more about this. And we'll send you a couple funny videos about communication 
and unpack some of this. Hope you're well. It was a pleasure to talk with all that I was able to talk with uh, the past two weeks, and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Take care, everybody.